Here I just want to do another example of finding the area under a normal curve. Um, so here's our example. Find the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of negative 0.24. Now I, I did one of these before, so if you watch the video that had this example, this is pretty much the same thing, only I've got a different z-score. I should remember that my z-score in the middle of my distribution is always going to be zero. So here's the center of my distribution. The z-score for the mean, the mean is always in the center, is going to be zero. So negative, two, negative 0.24 is going to be a little bit to the left of that. So if I come over here, right about there is going to be negative 0.24. So let me go ahead and write this in right there is negative 0.24 my z-score. All right, now I want to shade appropriately. Again, I highly recommend that you draw a picture, draw a picture, draw a picture. It makes a huge difference in understanding what you are trying to find. So the shaded area here under the curve in yellow is what I'm trying to find. That's what cumulative area tells me. Okay, cumulative area means the area starting at the left and working my way up to a particular z-score, and in this case it's negative 0.24. Again, um, just like my previous video, I'm going to show you how to find the area using your calculator. Your calculator needs a left-hand boundary and a right-hand boundary. My right-hand boundary is negative 0.24, and the left-hand boundary, since this goes on forever and ever and ever and never stops, I have to pick a, sto a stopping point. So going to the left, I'm going to use a left-hand boundary of negative 99. Some textbooks will and, and teachers will tell you to use negative 10,000 if you're going to the left or positive 10,000 if you're going to the right. But in reality, if you go anywhere beyond beyond like three, a z-score of three, you're going to get almost the exact same, uh, exact same values. So let's go second vars for variables and go down to number two. I'm going to use the normal CDF function. My left-hand boundary is negative 99, comma, you always have to put your comma in there, and my right-hand boundary is negative 0.24. Close my parentheses, and when I hit enter, it gives me the area that is shaded. So let me go ahead and pull this in over here, and there it is. The area, the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of negative 0.24, in other words, the area to the left of a z-score of negative 2.24, is 0.405, I'll round off to four decimal places, 0.4052. Now, just so you can see, if I go back and do this again and hit second vars number two and use my normal distribution, let's say I only went and used a left-hand boundary of negative three and then comma negative 0.24. Close my parentheses. See how it's close? It's not exactly. I've got 0.4051 and here I've got 0.4038. If I were to do this again and change this so that I go out, let's go out to a left-hand boundary of negative 10 and negative 0.24 and go ahead and hit enter. I'm getting a little bit closer, 0 0.40516, 0 0.40516. In fact, it gives me the same value as before. So that's why I'm saying that just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use negative 99 if I'm finding the area to the left of a z-score. And in, in relation to that, if I were going to the right, I would use positive 99 as my right-hand boundary. So there's another example.